Hi there and welcome to another PSC Tuts Spoon Fed Photoshop tutorial. I'm Gavin Steele and I'm going to be taking you through James's how to turn a humdrum photo into a cinematic portrait. So let's have a look at the final image that we're going to be trying to create today. And we've got a what looks like a general picture of a man, a bald, a bald man, um, head slumped on his hand, wearing a shirt, and we've got a you know, moody background, we've got some fake rain coming down here. And overall, it's a very stylized piece. It's been darkened, and you know, overall, it just look, looks it looks really good. So let's have a look at some of these steps along the way. As always, all of the files are linked to as you go through the tutorial, and I've opened them up over here. So we've got this uh, impending summer storm image. We've got some water balloons being popped, and another water balloon, and. Here's some alternative images that I found of some balding men on the Stock Exchange site. Some of these would be just as good to use, if not. Uh, then do head over to Stock Exchange and you can purchase the one used in this tutorial. There's a small for one quid, I think, and so on. So I understand when you've got to pay for the uh, stock photos, it can kind of you know stop you in tracks a little bit. But just play around with other images. Trying to find a bald image uh, will be perfectly suitable or even if they're not bald, you'll still be able to create most of this effect. So the first thing that we're going to do is have a quick look at what I managed to create. Fairly similar. And let's grab the zoom and just zoom in past some of this rain. Okay, so very stylized. We've got the water over here on the shoulder and so on. So what we're going to do, we're going to let's minimize that down. And let's load up picture of our man. Okay, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to set this back using my history to where we were at the start and let's just zoom out. Now just to get started on this tutorial there's a number of ways that you can um, select uh, different things. You can use the pen tool and so on but because he's on a white background the tutorial just basically takes you through um, holding down shift with the magic wand tool to select two white areas and then once you've got those selected head up to selection we're going to modify them and we're going to filter them uh, sorry we're going to feather them so a one pixel feather click on OK selection modify expand uh, maybe one or two pixels click on OK now we've got that selection there I'm going to open up my background layer I'm just going to duplicate it so I've always got a copy of it and then on this new layer I'm just going to hit delete if I turn off the other layer, you can see if I deselect, we now have our picture separated from our white background. And again, we can turn this layer back on, lock it just in case we need to come back and then turn it off. And we've got our clear background there. So once you've cut out your man, next thing we want to do is we're going to grab um, the dodge tool and we're going to add some highlights uh, to the image. So head over to your dodge tool. So this one here, click O on the keyboard. Make sure that you change the range to highlights. Exposure down to 15%. And I'm just going to zoom in and we're going to have a look at just lightening up these eyes a little bit. Okay, so make sure you're on the right layer. Bring the size of the brush right down. And just give it a couple of strokes inside there. And the other eye. Okay, and that's just going to make those eyes just stand out that little bit. Brilliant. Right, so once you've done that over the eyes, we're going to open up our clouds image and we're going to bring them over and we're going to start merging and playing around with those. So again, load up your clouds pictures. I've got mine down here. Okay, and I think we can just simply drag these pictures, these clouds, straight in. So V on the keyboard, I'm just going to drag that straight into our composition. And I'm going to stick it. For now, I'm going to leave it over. And I'm going to scale it down, Command T, to about 50 is probably too small, about 75. And then I'm just going to move these, stick it in place, hold down Alt, create another layer. Bring it over to the left, bring it down, and over till you get a you know a bit of a pattern like so. 
E on the keyboard is going to bring up the eraser, make sure you've got it nice and feathered and double check which layer you're on and which layer you want to blend in with which. I'm going to bring this one to the top and then while I've still got this layer selected I'm going to hold down my eraser down here at the bottom and just slowly eat away at the edge. So if you look, the mouse, the actual circle isn't coming, isn't actually touching that line but because we've got it on such a, a low softness it just blends in perfectly and you can hardly tell that they're joined apart from the fact that um, this area here is duplicated so one way we could get rid of that is by using the clone tool or I could have just grabbed this layer and we'll just flip it like so and then exactly the same process as before Oop, wrong layer just with the eraser tool getting close to that edge we should get a fairly nice blend like so, looks pretty good uh, we've even got this little new little cloud here which has you know, worked out pretty well okay and then the same again what we're going to do is we're going to blend these lines here so just going to come over to this side and just looking at this join here and that's fine okay and then we're going to work on this top layer Oop, a little bit too much there so there's not enough overlap from this layer so I'm just going to move this layer up like so come back to this layer move this layer underneath and there we go the blend works fine okay now we're going to focus on this little corner here from this bottom left piece and again we're going to have to be careful not to erase too much Okay, looks pretty good. Okay. So, going to grab all of those layers together, merge them, stick them below our man layer, and now we've got a nice moody, cloudy background. Okay, then we're going to move on now. We're going to start to play around with the color of the image and start to play around with changing um, this face. And we're going to start by adding a curves layer. Oops, too many uh, areas set up here. So we're going to start by setting up... Uh, a new layer and it's going to be a curves adjustment layer so head up to layer new adjustment layer and it's going to be curves make sure you check use the previous layer to create a clipping mask and you might want to name this curves underscore dark okay we're just going to make a really slight adjustment we're just going to bring this down just to about there in fact let's cancel that we should be doing this top of our man image let's rename that man okay so layer new adjustment layer curves check clipping and we're going to call this dark and again, I'm just going to move it to the side just so we can have a look at what effect it has on our actual image. Bring this down. OK, that's pretty good. Click on OK. And then with the layer mask selected, we're going to start to fill that with 60% black. So if we just type in 60%, something like that will be fine, click on OK and then make sure you've selected the gradient map G on the keyboard brings up the bucket we 
can just fill it and it just disappears. And we're going to start to use the burn tool and the brush tool to start to bring out some of those areas on the image. So once you've uh, pasted in that area, we're going to select the paintbrush tool, so B on the keyboard. We want the hardness to be set to um, zero, 15% opacity, and 65% for the flow. Just hit enter. Okay, we want the foreground color to be white. And basically we're going to paint over some of these areas to bring through that dark color that we just created with our curves. So I'm just going to zoom in on our head there, back to B for the brush. Nice large brush, 200 pixels, something like that. And we're just going to cover this area down the side. See how it just slightly darkens that area. Come across the middle, down the side. And we're looking for all the dark areas, uh, just generally around the face down here. Okay, you can always come over it you know, a couple more times, just trying to get the blending right. Okay, we're going to come across this area right here. Nice big brushes. Across the nose. And then we're going to zoom in. And we're going to do the eye area in a little bit more detail. So back to your brush tool. Reduce the size. And we're going to get this area just under here. Okay. All the time, just building up the layers as you go. Move down to the nose. It's building that up. Okay, and then zoom out and let's have a look how we've got on. Okay, we need to do a bit of the mouth. So back in, brush tool again, reduce it down in size. Just going to come across the lips here. Come right into this line. Okay, Z on the keyboard, Alt, and click just to zoom out. And let's have a look how we're getting on with that. Okay, it looks pretty good. Let's just go back into those smaller areas of the wrinkles up here. And let's increase the opacity of our brush into the 40s or high 30s. And we're just going to come along this area here. Bring these out a little bit. Like so. Okay, let's alt on the keyboard and let's zoom out and have a look. Okay, it looks a bit better. Now if we turn on our background layer, we can start to see what effect that has. Okay, so building up the mood of this image, we're darkening this face, making it a little bit redder, and that's pretty good for now. So what we're going to do is, I'm going to turn that layer off my clouds back on. We're going to create another curves layer above our man and above the previous curves dark. And we're going to go back to layer, new adjustment layer, curves. Make sure you check the previous layer comp. And we're going to call this light. And then, just like before, we're going to play around with our curves. 
Um, let's just bring this into shot. We're just going to arch this top bit up here. So we just grab this here. Just bring it up just a notch. There we go. And click on OK. And again, we're going to fill the mask with that 60% black. So G on the keyboard. And let's fill that in again. Again, back onto the, your brush tool, soft dead brush, and we're going to basically bring in our highlights. So, whoops. Okay, and we're going to, for all the, like, the low lights, the dark areas, we need the highlight just to bring it out a little bit more. So with your brush tool selected, and make sure you have white set as your foreground, again onto this layer mask, we're just going to lighten up some of these areas around the actual darker areas, and that's going to make them stand out just a little bit. So, Some bigger brushes. Okay, all that scratch you can hear is just coming from my Wacom. Okay, let's zoom out and have a look. Okay, it looks pretty good. Right. Next thing we need to do is we need to create a gradient map, and that's above all the other layers. So layer, new adjustment layer, gradient map. And again, we're going to use the clipping mask, and I'm going to click on OK. And we need to think about what colors we're going to use for our gradient map. Um, we're trying to, you know, build up the overall uh, look and feel of the image. So we kind of want this like dark blue image to come out and to really bring in some of those shadows and just darken those areas a little bit and to do that we're going to use a light bluey green color so let me bring that up okay so the first color that you're going to use is one two two three two b and click on okay click on okay Dither was selected, and let's click on OK, and then we're going to set the opacity down to about 75%, and click on OK, head up to blending mode, and we're going to use soft light, and again, it's just little things like this are just slowly going to build up on our image. So. We now need to add another gradient map um, layer, this time below our man. So we're going to go to layer, new adjustment layer, gradient map, and we're going to click on OK. Make sure it's above your cloud layer. The first color, our darker color, is going to be, let's highlight that, 164370, and a lighter color. It's going to be a yellowy color. So it's going to be E2 DC 9A. Click on OK. And OK again. And then we're going to set that one to soft light. And we're going to reduce that opacity down to 68. And hit enter. So we're just building up the colors of the piece, building up the colors of the image, just trying to get somewhere close to this final result of this kind of moody, kind of cinematic feel. So once you've done that, we're going to move on and add a curves layer below 
our gradient mask. So layer, new adjustment layer, curves. And let's set this one just up a little bit. Clean this. Okay, and we're going to set that to 60%. And then hit enter. We're going to add a new layer above our cloud layer. So come down here, new layer. And we're going to fill this with our 60% black, which is now gone. So somewhere up here. There we go. Shield the keyboard, fill that in. And then we're going to set that to overlay. And it should hopefully just disappear into the background. And we're going to grab the burn tool and we're going to get a big brush. So over to your burn tool, increase the size of your brush. Set it to midtones, and let's set the opacity or the exposure to 15. Okay, and we're going to burn the corners and create like a vignette to our image. So, Z, just zoom out so we can see. I'm back to our tool, and we're just going to get these corner areas down here, along the side, and up. So we're just burning that overlay layer. Okay, that looks pretty good. Right, once we've done that, we're going to create another new layer above our man. And we're going to make sure that's clipping. So look out for that little drop down arrow. If it's not there, hold down Alt on the keyboard and see how the cursor changes to these circles, a black one and a white and black circle. You just click and it will map to the layer below. And this is basically going to be a glow layer. So we're going to create one above and one below. So if we come below our man layer, create a new layer. In fact, let's bring that right down. below these styles, you're going to grab a white brush and we're slowly just going to basically bring in a little bit of shadow or a little bit of glow behind our chap. So if I go too much, you can see there's too much there just coming over, but just nice soft brush. Coming around. like so, and then on the layer above exactly the same, reduce the opacity right down, let's bring that up, okay I'm happy with that. So we need to select all the layers of a man now and we're going to start to stylize our piece. Now if you want a more natural look you don't have to do this next bit, uh, you can just carry on or you can keep watching this a little bit and I'll take you through how we're going to stylize our image. So, we're going to come back up to these light and dark areas uh, with our curves, these settings up here and we're just going to flick between the two of them to bring out a bit more detail and we're going to accomplish that. So let's zoom in and start with the dark area, this one here. Again, just you need your brush tool I'm going to reduce the size, I'm going to increase the opacity to about 38, increase my flow a bit, and okay, I'm just going to bring out that darker bit of these eyelashes. Just un unmasking these areas here. And if you look, this little line along here, 
be a little darker. Bring out some of these eyebrow hairs. Same with this eye here, just bring out these hairs. Too much there. I'm going to come up to this light area now, and we're going to put in the highlights for those areas that we've just done. So, down here, there's some. zoom out. Okay, if we hold down Alt on the keyboard and click on our layer, we can actually see the areas that we've applied it. And these are the kind of areas that you want to really pick out on your image. We need a little bit more on the lips, so I'm just going to come down here and zoom right in. And working on the darks, so back to your brush tool, make it nice and small, we're going to pick out these lines. Like so. Back up to the light area and then we're going to pick out these little highlight areas. So, Just basically work around the image, building up the light and dark areas. Have a zoom out. Might need a little bit darker across the forehead here. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that said. And zoom out. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Okay, so we're going to move on to the next step. Now this part, you can take it or leave it, as I said, but 
we're going to take it for this tutorial and just show you how far you can get with it or how much you want to use it. I'm not a big fan of it, so I'm going to use it fairly uh, lightly. Uh, we're going to start by just duplicating um, these layers just to you know give them a real impact and then just reduce the opacity right down. Again, duplicate that light light layer. Oop, I've done the dark one there twice. Let's bin that. Okay, and bin that. And let's duplicate our light layer. There we go. And these, I think if I remember correctly, should all be mapping. So I'm just going to map them like so. And then again, play around with the opacity of the layers you just brought in or just duplicated like so. So for this next step we need to select all of the layers including the man up. So just shift and click from the bottom to the top. And I'm gonna uh, the way I figured out how to do this from the tutorial is I'm gonna stick it in a group. Uh, I'm gonna duplicate that group. Then I'm gonna merge that group down and we're gonna select that area inside. Head up to filter, we're gonna go to um, stylize glowing edges and let's move that over so you can get an idea of what we're getting here set the um, the width to 2, brightness 13, smoothness to 15 uh, glowing edges and click on OK and you get this cool kind of psychedelic lines that go around the image hit command L on the keyboard bring up the levels and play around with increasing those um, I'm going to set mine to 51 and then 217. Okay, it looks pretty good. And just play around. Just seeing what you get depending on your image. Okay. Again, play around. We'll stick with that and then click on OK. And then we're going to set that to screen. Now, at first, it does look horrible, but we're just going to reduce the opacity right down until you get it just about where you want it to be. So it is a very stylized kind of effect. So if you want to have the eyes to look like, you know, to look like this, then, you know, stick with this kind of style. But I'm just going to reduce mine down. Until they just start to add something to the image there. So about 29 might still be a little bit high. Yeah, 25, they still add just a little bit, but uh, not too much. Because I'm not a big fan of it, but it definitely, you know, you can definitely use it in lots of different ways, and it is a great tool for picking out edges and adding a bit of colour and things like that to your images. So once you've done that, we're gonna duplicate uh, our cloud layer and we're going to move it above that glowing layer and I'm just going to come back to our group here and I'm going to ungroup them and I'm going to stick that group in the bin just so I can have a clear, clear view of what I'm doing here so with that new layer above our glowing edges we're going to apply 2-3 to three pixel blur so head over to Gaussian Blur and let's have it set to about 2 pixels and let's make sure we're on the right layer have that set to, yeah, let's say 2 pixels let's try 3 pixels click on OK set that to screen and reduce the opacity down to about 50% somewhere around there okay and then grab the eraser tool E on the keyboard big soft edge and we're gonna start to erase all these areas up at the top <coughs> excuse me 
I hope that didn't shock you. Ooh. I think I'm coming down with a bit of a cold, unfortunately. So, anyway, we'll press on. Okay, so, bring that cloud. You only want it to be along the bottom, really. So make sure you get it all the way across. And it's kind of like, I don't know, steam or spray coming up from the rain that we're going to add. So a big soft brush for doing that. Let's have a look at our water images. And this is what's left of them. Okay. Now to show you what we started out with, I'm going to come back to the tutorial and just show you the actual stock itself. Okay, so all I've done with the stock is with the eraser tool, erased all of these different little bits. Okay, so I took out this area down here. So that's what it looked like. And I literally just erased that stuff below, you can see. And I've stuck it on a black background just so I can see what I was doing as I worked along with it. And the same, oh, I'm going to have to move this now. Let's pop that down. The same for this other layer. I got, just deleted the balloon, so we've got some spray. But for now, we're going to be working with this image here. So V on the keyboard, once you've deleted that area out, you might want to burn this little bit down the bottom just to get a better blend. And we're just going to drag that straight into our project. And I can minimize that out of the way. Okay, so V on the keyboard, we're going to position that where we want it. I want it over this shoulder somewhere. That looks pretty good. Command T to scale it. Let's just bring it down in size. And then we're going to set that layer to screen. Okay, and that gets rid of that horrible black area. Command T again, and this time we're just going to play around with how we want to position it on the shoulder. So I'm going to go for something like that. Grab the eraser tool. In fact, before I do that, V on the keyboard, I'm going to Alt click and just bring out a copy that we might use for a bit down here. So back to this original, grab the eraser tool and just get rid of some of that, some of that, okay. Let's grab this layer. Let's flip that and again, let's rotate that 40 degrees. Maybe even a little bit more. Because we want this to come down the shoulder. Yeah. And again, with the eraser tool, let's get rid of this bit that we don't need. Zoom in. Okay, it looks pretty good. I'm happy with that. In fact, let's just move shift this over just to the ear. Brilliant. And then let's zoom out from the whole picture and have a look. Okay, so that's basically the right hand splash or the right side. So let's take that in a group. Let's call that right. Let's duplicate that group. And let's call it left. V on the keyboard. And let's move that over. Like so. Now just because in a group doesn't mean they're stuck in that position, we can go into that group now. Grab the top one. Flip that horizontally, even just rotate it. Like so. Grab our other layer. 
again, transform that. Rotate that and then go in with the eraser tool and let's just clean this up a little bit. Okay. How's that looking? It looks pretty good. Okay, let's get rid of some of these little splashes over the over the head. We don't want them to be too distracting. But that looks pretty good to me. Okay, so once you've done that with those water images, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna play around with uh, a bit of the mist coming around or bigger splashes. So I'm going to grab um, not that one, the one I moved over to the side here. We're going to bring in this layer and this is the one that was actually a balloon originally and I just deleted out the area I didn't want. Nice soft brush and now we're just going to bring that layer in just like we did like so okay and if you want bigger um, raindrops or bigger splashes just create increase the size enter and change the blending mode to screen and you get a really nice effect and again if you zoom in oh not too much though there we go and it kind of looks like a really unfortunate rainy day that he's in so again alt v and then alt on the keyboard I'm just going to copy that layer over transform it maybe rotate it 50 degrees or something like that. Bring it down to the bottom right corner. Hit enter. Grab that layer. Drag that over to the bottom right. And you just get a really good overall kind of idea of how you know the rain's coming down around him. Okay, once you've finished with all of that. We're going to move on and we're going to create um, some fake rain and a little starburst over his shoulder. So we're going to start by creating a new layer above the water drops, which is these ones here. And we're going to, oops, we're going to call that Starburst. We're going to set it to, um, we're going to fill it with that 60% black which I've got over here, G on the keyboard, and then we're going to go to filter, noise, add noise, and we're going to set this up to about 75. Make sure it's Gaussian and set to monochromatic. We can click on OK, and then we're going to have a radial blur try and get it pretty close to the right shoulder over here so maybe just move that in just a bit set it to 100 zoom uh, quality set to good click on OK and we're going to set that to overlay there we go now we didn't quite get it and you probably won't quite get it the first time unfortunately there's no preview on that tool but if we just move it up to the right hand shoulder here and then if we just transform it It'll work just fine. There we go. Move it again. If it's still not quite right, just transform it again. Until you get it all on, like so. Now I'm going to add a little mask here. And I'm going to mask out using black. Nice big brush. I don't want 
any of this to be on his actual face. So make sure, <coughs> excuse me, you're on the mask layer. And we're just going to get rid of some of this. Let's increase that to 100%. Some of the shirt area here. Okay, so let's see what that's done. Let's zoom in. There we go. It's just coming over his shoulder to the right. It doesn't need to be all over his face. Yeah, that looks pretty good. So now we're going to create some uh, fake rain above our starburst layer. So click on new layer. We're going to call this fake rain. And again, grab that 60% black, fill that layer. We're going to go up to add noise. We're going to set that to, <coughs> excuse me, uh, pretty much exactly the same as we did before. Click on OK. We're going to resize it so it's nice and big. So Command T, scale it to about 175. In fact, we don't need to keep the um, restrictions there. Let's set that to 195. Click on OK. And then we're going to go to motion. Oh, make sure you hit enter. Blur, motion blur. And have that set to about 59 degrees at 150 pixels. Click on OK. And we're going to go blending options. So we can click on this little FX down here, blending options, or you could double click on the layer. And then with this first panel, with your actual blending options panel, we're going to grab this little slider and we're going to bring it down to about 130. Click on OK, and you get something that looks like this. Then we're going to go filter, blur, Gaussian blur, set it to about 3.5. Yep, that looks pretty good. And then we're going to go to Smart Sharpen. So, Filter, Smart Sharpen. Have that set to Basic, Default, 96 by 45.7. Gaussian Blur and click on OK. Take a couple seconds to apply that. That looks pretty good. Then Command L to get your levels panel up, and we're going to set that just a little nudge that up to seven. Click on OK, and let's have a look. Okay, that's pretty good. No screen's probably too much. overlay you can just start to see some of those streaks coming through so if I zoom in just see these streaks as they fall across the face and across the image like so we're going to apply a another load of uh, fake rain this time we're going to do it behind our image but in front of our cloud image so in order to do that Okay, we need to oh, come back to Photoshop. We need to, in fact, I'm just going to duplicate this layer and I'm going to bring it right beneath, right down above my vignette layer, like so. And if we move around, we can see them in the background there. Coming down across his sleeve, across his hand, and again in the background layer. Let's zoom out. And have a look. Yep, so they're just faint little raindrops just passing by. So I like that, that's pretty good. Okay, we're going to move on, and this time we're going to add a, a gradient map layer, and we're going to do this above uh, our fake rain. So let's come back up here, fake rain. We're going to go to layer, new adjustment layer and gradient map. Click 
click on OK. And the colors that we're going to select is going to go to white. We're going to start with 075053. 075053. And it goes to white. And, oh, sorry about that. We're going to go to opacity. And we're going to set that down to 50%. Or 55 and then we're gonna go and we're gonna lay a mask our actual face so let's grab that nice soft brush there we go we're just gonna bring out the face like so and change our blending mode to color there we go so start to add that color to the effect head up to hue and saturation image adjustments and oh let's make sure we come down here new adjustment layer hue and saturation and let's just bring the saturation down to minus 68. And again, have a look at your image as you do it and see what kind of effect you know you want it to have. So minus 68 might be a little bit too much. I'm just going to bring a little bit of that redness back. 59, yep. Yeah. Let's have a look. No, I'm going to go with the 68, 65. Okay, and lightness again, have a play around with it, see what effect that has. But I think for this, we're just going to play around with um, our saturation and click on OK. Okay, curves layer. So Command L again. But we're going to do this. Actually, we don't need a curves layer, we're going to move on. We need a new layer above uh, the very top, and this is going to be an overlay layer and we're going to dodge and burn this layer so create a new layer and we're going to fill that with our 60% black like so we're going to set this um, to overlay and that disappears grab the dodge tool my good old friend and we're going to dodge and burn the highlights again that we did a little bit earlier just to see we get on so oh, that's the light so let's if you hold down alt it'll flick between dodge and burn and we're just going to darken the areas that we picked out earlier Now I'm just lightening up these light areas. If you need the light areas just to highlight those those darker areas, I know that sounds obvious, but it's just what you need to do to make them stand out that little bit more. Okay, next thing we need to do is we're going to create a new layer, and we're going to fill that with black, and we're going to put on a lens flare just over this right-hand layer here. So fill it. Filter, render, lens flare. Yeah, one fifty should one hundred five should do it. If it's not quite in the area that you want it to be in, don't worry. We're going to move it anyway. We're going to set it to screen to get rid of the black. V on the keyboard, and we're just going to move it over this far right area. I'm going to grab the eraser tool, soft brush. I'm just going to get rid of 
a lot of these bits around here because we don't really need them. So you get something like so. In fact, let me just go back a couple of strokes. Okay. So once you've got that in place and you've got your lens flare in, we're going to now apply our image twice. So go to image, apply image, click on OK. Hmm, not happy with that applying image, it really lightens everything up. So another way of doing that is shift everything, copy it, merge it. There we go. I'm going to duplicate that layer. We're going to call this bottom one inverted and the top one we're going to call oh, I can't remember what we're going to call it now let's call it high pass because that's what we're going to do hope that's right okay oh sorry right we've got too many areas for too many different things okay the high pass we're going to go to filter other and we're going to select high pass do it to about two pixels you can see the kind of detail that you're going to get you can do it right up but I think 2, 2.5 depending on your image should be just enough and you set that layer to overlay and it's just going to bring out all those little lines that little bit of detail again with our inverted layer we're going to command shift U that's going to desaturate it command I invert going to go to filter, blur and Gaussian blur and we're going to do that about 45% click on OK and let's bring this down to about 35 even that looks too high let's set this first to overlay and that's the tutorial so it's just a stylized look at playing around blending modes and bringing out different images uh, bringing in these water splashes across the side and that's a pretty cool tutorial and a pretty quick one as well so thanks very much James and I hope you enjoyed the tutorial I've been Gavin Steele taking you through how to turn a humdrum photo into a cinematic portrait thanks very much